Knitting with Curly podcast. This is episode 158. Welcome. I am so glad you are here on this foggy, dreary, rainy day that is perfect for knitting. It is Joy Sunday. I've got joy. Yes, I do. I've got joy. How about you? <laughs> it is perfect knitting weather and very joyful. I am drinking tea today out of my Cody Wyoming mug. Thank you so much, Carista, for sending this to me. I love it. It's very Wyoming, isn't it? Like, this just makes me think of Wyoming. I have never been there, but I would love to go. It looks like fun. It looks like a lot of open space and not a lot of people, which I love. I love people, but I also love not people. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. If you are new, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, all that stuff. Um, Yes, I received a lovely gift in the mail from a wonderful knitter named Carol. Hi, Carol. Carol sent me this tatted cross. Isn't this beautiful? We talked about tatting a couple months ago, I think, on the podcast. And my friend Julie actually also tatted a bookmark for Charlotte for her first communion. Uh, and I have been meaning to show that since then, but hi, Julie. <laughs> but I just haven't. I'm not sure where it is right now, but Charlotte knows. Um, but isn't this beautiful? Tatting is extremely intricate. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's a bookmark, but I feel like I could hang it on, on the tree as an ornament. Might blend into this one a little too much, but it's just so pretty. I love that. Thank you so much, Carol. That was so kind of you. Um... What else? It's so good to be here. I'm just so happy to be here with all of you. Today, I am wearing my Vesper sweater. So yesterday, we all went out to dinner for Charlotte's birthday with my in-laws, and Gigi grabbed the sweater and put it on, and she was like, Mom, this sweater is my new favorite thing ever. She's like, I love it. It is so stylish, and it's warm but light, like I'm not too hot. Um, and so we took this family picture before we went out because I wanted a family picture to stick in just the very few Christmas cards that I'm doing this year. I'm like a low effort Christmas card person. So this was our low effort picture. Um, and Gigi is wearing the Vesper sweater. And uh, I thought I'm going to wear it today. And I'm also wearing it with my joy necklace since it is joy Sunday. It's go day taste Sunday, pink candle Sunday during Advent. Um, this is on sale over at the shop. So if you need a last minute gift for a knitter in your life, uh, go and grab one of these. It's got stitch markers on it, comes with a couple other stitch markers. Very, very cute. Um, so I wore this to church this morning and I wanna talk about, I'm wearing it with these puffy pants. Um, a lovely knitter named Jamie sent me a link to a podcast by Nora Knits who I had never heard of before, uh, but I thought the podcast was delightful. And she sent it to me because Nora talked about the Vesper sweater on it. She, I'll link that podcast below if you want to go see it. Um, but she was highlighting free striped sweaters. So the Vesper was on that list. And she also talked about sparkle yarn. So she was talking about ways to add some sparkle into your knitting for the holiday where you don't want to have like an entirely sparkly sweater, like just to add in a little bit of sparkle. And that was why the stripes, because she was like, you could just do one stripe as a sparkle and the other stripe as a non-sparkle to kind of balance it out. Um, but I was like, I just loved everything about this. I love, I thought she was delightful. I loved what she said about my sweater. I thought that was so kind. And she, I don't remember exactly. I think she pulled out like a picture from a, just from the internet of an outfit that had these flowy pants. She was like, this sweater tucked into some flowy pants, that would be amazing. So I tried that today. These pants are not really high-waisted. So I, I didn't, I couldn't really tuck them in because they just end right there, but they are very fluffy. Um, but I love that idea. I was like, gosh, that would look so good. And then I was like, why do we not have more sparkle yarn in our lives? Why? Because sparkles are great. 
I love sparkles. Sparkles. <laughs> Lego Movie 2, I think, or Lego Movie 1. Can't remember. It's from the Lego Movie. So I remembered that I had purchased some sparkle yarn from Friends and Fiber Works at the um, Nitty McPurly retreat back in January. And somehow there is no ball band. I'm not sure what happened to it. But this is the kind of thing you could probably get anywhere. You can really see it better on the ball. Um, so it's like a plasticky strand and it has these little mini sequins throughout it. I don't know why I bought it. Somebody, I think it was Kelly P. Hi, Kelly. Kelly suggested, she's like, oh, I love this. I want to mix this into some, like hold it together with another yarn. And I was like, ooh, what a great idea. So I bought one with really no idea what to do with it. But I think I need to make something with this. What should I make? I don't know. I only have this one, but I feel like I could probably get more. I could contact Lisa and ask her. Lisa is the owner of Friends and Fiberworks. Um, but yeah, how cool would a Vesper be with some sparkle? So Gigi wore this yesterday and it's a little bit big for her. I mean, it is a big sweater, but you know, it's sized for me. I weigh about 30 pounds more than Gigi. So the neck hole looks good on me. It was a little, just a little bit too big on her and just everything was just a little bit too big. So this is the second size, but Gigi really needs the first size. So I thought, well, maybe I should knit one for Gigi. But then I thought, what I really want is another one for me. <laughs> so maybe Gigi should knit her own. What do you think? Yes, Gigi should knit her own. That's what I think. Okay. Um, also, another thing that I thought of before we get actually into the podcast is I don't have a Christmas sweater. How did this happen? How do I not have a Christmas sweater? So I thought, in the absence of like designing a whole sweater, it would be really cool to have a Benedicta sweater in Christmas colors. But the Nitty McPurly Christmas colors aren't really the traditional Christmas colors. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool? I was thinking of this avocado from last week. So last week when I showed the ornaments, I was like, oh, look away if you don't wanna be, if you don't wanna spoil the surprise. And then I left them there the whole episode. <laughs> so how cool would a Benedicta be in a green like this and a pink like this? And that would be the Christmas sweater. Oh my gosh. The, I'm loving the Benedicta right now. I've been wearing that a lot lately because I just really like the silhouette of it with flowy pants. Flowy pants are kind of in right now. And uh, I got a pair of jeans that are like wide leg. And so you can't wear anything too flowy on the top or you just look too loose. So the Benedicta being more fitted, it just looks great with those jeans. So I got that on the brain. But I'm always thinking like about what I can knit. And realistically, I have one brain and two hands and that's all I've got. So. None of these things will probably materialize, but I do love to think about it. Every now and then, I let my brain just run free, and it just builds all these castles in the sky about things I would like to do, and then I have to realize what can I actually do, and then I just do that. So last week, we had we showed uh, Bertrand the gnome and the avocado with a pit for the heart, uh, and this week, I we have two more ornaments. Actually, if you are keeping up with the Advent calendar knit along, you are on day 17. And that is the, th this is, I think, maybe the only ornament that uses four colors. And so I'm not going to show that one today because there's still one more color that's a surprise. And that is tomorrow's color. So I'll show that one next week. This week we had, it was a lot of yellow. Uh, we did, I can't remember which one was first. I think it was the B. It's a, it's a chonky fat bee with wings that are just comically tiny. Oh, someone told me there was an error in the wing pattern too, where I think it was supposed to be six stitches and somewhere it said 10. I apologize. <sighs> PDFs. And when there's nine of them, it's anyway. Um, he is just adorable with his little stinger. Uh, and you just kind of have to shape it. And when you, when you weave in the end, you can make it kind of pointy rather than, you know, it, it has a similar 
construction is this, but the way that you shape it in the end gets you that stinger shape. So there's the chonky bee. We'll hang him up. Let's see, put him over here. Oh, I love him. Okay, now the next one was the cornament. And this one was inspired by Gigi's corn. Do I still have it up here? Yes, I do. This is um, the corn that Gigi crocheted. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, the I really did get similar with the colors, didn't I? So the only difference is that this one is crocheted by Gigi uh, and this one is entirely knit and you kind of have to pose his little stalks there. But I just love them with no face except eyes and cheeks. I just think that is so cute. <laughs> so much fun. If I hang them down here, yeah, you'll still see them. Oh my gosh, you guys. I have loved making this advent calendar so much. I have been following along with you on Instagram a little bit. I am not great at Instagram, although I have spent more time doom scrolling this week than I normally do. So um, I have seen a little bit more. That was progress in shop news. Did I say that? Progress in shop news. <laughs> so um, if you want to join in and you have not already, but you would like to knit some really, really cute ornaments, you can go pick up that pattern over on my website if you want. Uh, grab the Vesper pattern while you're there because it's free. Uh, yeah, so the shop is actually very quiet right now and it's really, really nice. The sock rulers almost entirely went out. There were a few. I got my shipment in and I sent out all the pre-orders that I could. So hopefully you have received your sock ruler or it is on its way to you now. Uh, there were a few, if you ordered your sock ruler, if you pre-ordered it recently, um, you may not have gotten yours yet. That will be in the next batch. Uh, I did have to take the listing for the sock ruler off my website. Um, not exactly sure what the future of the sock rulers is right now, but you know, it's possible that there will be more. We shall see. We shall see. Okay. Don't freak out. Please don't freak out. <laughs> uh, also all the pre-ordered yarn has shipped. So it was a whirlwind of getting all that stuff shipped out to you, but it is either on its way or at your doorstep or in your hands. And I hope you love it. Um, yeah, so it's quiet on the shop right now and I've let my brain, like I said, kind of run free a little bit and I get all of these amazing ideas and then I have to say, what can I actually accomplish? Um, you guys know Julie of the Nitty Cats podcast? She's my friend and she is like my balm scent consultant. Hi, Julie. She's always saying to me like, oh, Devin, this is the scent you need to make. And I'm always like, okay, like I'll, I'll look into that. And I, I, I do. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the best smell ever. She is a scent genius. So Julie sent me <clears throat> some recommendations for the spring balm. And I've got that in the works. I've got a lot of spring stuff in the works. So fun things are coming. Um, okay, so here is an example of me being super realistic. Gigi and I went to Hobby Lobby to get more yarn for her to finish her blanket. You know, her Tangled, like the movie Tangled blanket. And I saw these yarns. Aren't they so cute? Like they're cotton yarn in what's probably like a sport weight. And it just reminded me of the um, baker's twine, like that the ornaments are hung on. I just loved it. And it's really not that different from the baker's twine actually, but I thought I just have to buy this. And for some reason I, I opened it like an ape. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> Can't really explain that, but it's crafters secret cotton made in the USA. And uh, let's see, what does it say? It says to use a US seven if you're knitting or an H hook if you are crocheting. And so I just wanted to make a few coasters because those are nice to give as gifts. So I did last night, like I said, we went out to dinner with my in-laws. So on the car ride, 
I made one and a half coasters. I finished the other one when we got back. But these are just crocheted circles. So if you want to crochet a circle, I wanted a pattern. Like I wanted a pattern that was super simple that I didn't really have to pay attention to. And so I just basically found general recipes for crocheting a circle. When you crochet a circle, a lot of times it will end up looking like a polygon. You'll end up with kind of sides because all the increases are in the same row. And this sort of does, like you can see there where that's the, the, the last stitch there. But what I learned is that if you stagger the increases, then you will get one that looks more like a circle. So don't put the increases where you're like, you know, um, crochet one and then increase crochet two and then increase crochet three and you're you're just putting them all in a row you have to kind of move them around and so I did that without any real recipe and that's why you can sort of still see the polygon in there I didn't do it very well uh, but whatever you know no one cares they're coasters I love a good coaster don't you I love handmade coasters they fill me with joy to use them I have ones that I made. I have ones that I have bought at craft fairs. I just love them. I have ones that my kids have made for me. They're just really, really fun. So that's what I'm working on right now. That's a totally doable project, right? Totally doable. Um, something that I really want to be working on is my Go Lightly sweater. And I have not been. And I'm going to pull it out here, not because I have made any progress on it, but just to motivate me to work on it because I love it. This is a turtleneck less go lightly sweater with the poofy sleeves and it is in the Dresden DK in the Fontine colorway and I love it. I think it is fabulous. I just, I wanna wear it. I think, it, look, this is my color, more than yellow. I love the yellow, but it's not really my color. But the pink is just, great. I can't wait to wear this. I just need to work on it. So now that I've seen it again, I think I will work on this today in addition to some more coasters. Okay, topic of the week. We're going to talk a little bit about mosaic knitting. I want to show you what I've been working on. This is a project that um, I told you not, I didn't want you to get excited about it, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you because mosaic knitting is so interesting and it's so cool and it's worked very differently if you work it in the round as opposed to if you're working it flat. And the reason for that is because when you work in the round, you can switch colors every round because you get back to the beginning and you've got your two colors there, right? Like let's say you work with, if you have a black and a white, let's say you work with the white around, then you can go to the black around. You can, you can alternate every round. If you're working flat, you have to alternate every two rows because you go out and back, right? You're starting, your, your working yarn is on one end and you have to do the right side and then go back to the wrong side. So uh, in the Barbara Walker book, all of those patterns are written for flat knitting, but you could work it in the round and that would give you so many more options. I assume she is no longer with us. I don't know, probably she has died, um, but that would have been a good book for her to write. <laughs> Barbara Walker was just so smart. So anyway, here is that. All right, so this is a design that I have been working on. I'm not gonna give you too many details about it because like I said, I don't want you to get excited. <laughs> so this is a mosaic knitting pattern. And I just wanted to show you kind of how you work it. So when I picked this up, I found that I am on a wrong side row. So this is really cool. I'm working with the Fontine right now. And I just steamed this so that it would lay flat so it is a little bit damp. Um, I'm working with Fontine and Trinket. Oh, am I in the... There we go. Okay, so when you are working the wrong side row in mosaic knitting... I'm going to adjust this so I can see it a little bit better. There we go. Okay. So when you're working the wrong side and I am purling, 
what you do is, since I'm holding the pink, the fontine, I'm going to purl the fontine stitches. And then when I get to the other color, I'm just gonna slip them, slip. You don't need to look at the pattern at all. You just work the stitches that are in the color you are using and slip the other ones. And this magical thing creates the pattern. It's magical. So like I said, you are working two rows with the same color, slip, and it somehow works. Doesn't it seem like witchcraft? I mean, a lot of knitting seems like witchcraft, but this is what we're doing. We're just purling and slipping. And there you have it. Okay, now for my project, the fontine is the black and the trinket is the white. So for this row, hold on, let me get my chart here. I'll put it up on the screen. You can see the row that we're gonna work next. Looks like this. So what we do here, prop it up so I can see it. All right, is we're going, I like to take the color to the outside like that rather than on the inside. All right, so we're going to start with this color. And for this row, wherever we see the white, we're going to knit. And wherever we see the, see the black, we're going to slip. So this is how you work a mosaic knitting chart. It's so simple and it's so magical. <laughs> and so with that, you get this. Isn't it just amazing? Gosh, magic. Okay, the comment section. Always Yarn First is Leslie, the story that I read last week, and she said, thank you for reading my story, Devin. For some reason, someone else reading it made me even more emotional. I would love to hang out with you and Lori in the same room. Me too. I super, super hope to go to that retreat. I think that would be awesome. Yarn Chicken and Stuff, that's Tara, said, I love hearing Lindsay's story. I have, did I say Leslie? Lindsay, I'm sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> Okay, anyway, I've also been welcomed by Lori, and even though Arkansas Yarn Co. is three and a half hours from my house, it is my local yarn shop. Wow, that is far. She says, I drive to Texas for work, and I stop by to knit and shop on my way home. I am the opposite of Lori, and I adore her because she is so kind and welcoming, even to this grumpy introvert. I love the grumpy introverts of the world. I married one of them. And uh, so I get it, I get it. It's opposites attract, right? Good. Uh, Rachel says, I love your Kirby Werby monster, but I loved even more seeing how excited Charlotte was about him. It is so fulfilling to see someone enjoy something you have made for them. Charlotte is truly knitworthy. I also love your avocado ornament. You may be transforming me into an ornament maker. Thanks for another great podcast. I've had some people say that. They said, you know, I, I didn't buy the patterns at first because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like them or I don't wanna knit toys or, you know, I didn't know if I'd enjoy doing the, the projects. And then when they saw them, they were like, click, click, bye. <laughs> so you are not the first. I've, I've heard that from several people. Um, <laughs> a story I was gonna tell about uh, Leslie Lindsay. So the other day, I am sitting in the kitchen with my kids and I'm trying to think about what has to get done to that day. And so I pull the whiteboard over and I just start like jotting down some notes just to kind of organize my brain. It's not neat. It's, I didn't write it carefully. It was just for my own, you know, internal mind organization. And so Gigi comes in, Gigi's 14. 
And she goes, she looks at it and she goes, it just looks like scribble. She goes, what is this? And Alexis, who's 17 goes, that's the inside of mom's brain. It's chaos. <laughs> I laughed about that for a good while. She's extremely orderly and organized, the opposite of me. So anyway, Texas Peach Knits says, she quotes it, I keep my nativity together because I would lose baby Jesus. Me too, Devin, me too. <laughs> so that that's another, you know, inside mom's brain. We have to keep Jesus with the nativity because otherwise they will be forever separated. Some things, if you separate them, they're forever separated. <laughs> Just they're going to get lost. They're going to get put in a drawer and you'll never see them again. Uh, Amy Spar left a very long comment. I'm just going to read one part of it. She said, when you mentioned Barbara Walker, she sounded familiar. Turns out I have a book of hers called Knitting from the Top. More genius stuff from Barbara Walker. When I first started knitting 20-ish years ago, a lot of sweater patterns were knit in pieces with set-in sleeves. Because my row gauge is always off, I had an impossible time setting in sleeves and having them fit. I had no idea how to adjust the opening and sleeve cap for my row gauge issues. I'm not... Sorry, my phone storage was full. Anyway, Amy said... I had no idea, oh, I'm not sure how I came to find this book, but it has instruction for doing a top-down set-in sleeve where you pick up stitches around the armhole. It's brilliant. With the book, I taught myself to convert a pieced sweater to knitting in the round with a top-down sleeve. That is awesome. I feel like um, it's just short rows, right? I have a sweater where you do short rows in the sleeve. I'm trying to think which one that is, I don't know. <laughs> Lori Nolan says, Devin, I loved Lindsay's story. I work in a small coastal yarn shop. More and more, I am hearing about poor customer service. We have customers that drive about an hour and a half to get away from big city yarn shops. Sadly, they say that they are rude and make people feel unwelcome. Some have gone so far as to say that the owners and employees won't answer their questions about their projects because they didn't buy the yarn in their store. I can't, I just can't. Others who crochet rather than knit are made to feel that crochet is the lesser of the fiber arts. I don't understand this philosophy or how they can stay in business. In our shop, we love people and we're all about customer service. Yeah, that's kind of like the, the main thing that you have to be. Nobody wants to go to a store where people are grumpy. I don't get it. It's such a weird phenomenon. And I feel like a lot of us have had this experience where you walk in the store and they look at you like, why are you here? <laughs> I came to buy yarn. Are, are you interested in me buying your yarn? Because I'd like to buy it. I've had that experience a couple of times. And it's not to say that every yarn store is that way, but a lot of them are. It's very weird. Okay, this comment cracked me up. This commenter named Christine said, but you featured your knitting manger set and then you knit your child a monster? <laughs> I feel that this is a, a thinly veiled criticism. Uh, my response was, yep. <laughs> I get comments like this every now and then. And it, it's funny, you know, I'll, I'll get emails sometimes the same day where I get criticized. One email will criticize me for bringing Christianity into my podcast. And another one will criticize me for having a calendar during Lent. Like that's just in, an inappropriate use of Lent. Too, too Christian, not Christian enough. <laughs> oh, it cracks me up. So funny. Okay, moving right along to... Knitting fantasies. Both of these patterns are slipper patterns and they are both free and animal themed. I don't even know how that happened because I, I really, I feel like I looked for a long time for patterns that I liked, that got good reviews, that looked like something I really wanted to make. Um, but I love this first pick the most. 
These are the Family Bunny Slippers by Church Mouse Yarn. This is a free pattern, like I said. They are so cute. This is light worsted yarn held double. So I'm not sure what that would be. Probably bigger than bulky, maybe super bulky. Probably super bulky if I had to guess. Uh, but that comes in three sizes. And one of the comments in the description, not a comment, but it was part of the description where she said, these slippers really do stretch a lot. I have found that about just any slippers or like Crocs. I can wear my son's Crocs and I have gigantic feet and he's 11. So, I mean, he has big feet too, but not as big as me. Um, so some things that are just non-specific, you can kind of fit any foot into. And I feel like slippers are kind of that way, but they do come in three sizes and I have linked them below if you wanna make them. These look like they would be an awesome gift and would probably work up fairly quickly. Now this pattern is also free, it's also slippers, but it doesn't look like it would work up quite as quickly. It is DK yarn, these are the Fox slippers, a free pattern from The Gathered Magazine. And the yarn that they use is DK, like I said, and it's a blend of like wool and acrylic and stuff that would be really durable for a slipper. Uh, it only comes in one size and it says it's like for a woman size nine, but again, you could probably just make it a little bit smaller for a smaller foot, you know, just make it a little shorter. I imagine it would not be too hard to customize the size a little bit. And if your foot is bigger than that, like mine is, like I said, I have giant feet. I think it would just stretch a little bit, but whatever. <laughs> okay, I apologize for the insanity. It's, it's insanity in my house. It's always insane. Uh, today's story comes to us from Julie. Uh, Julie is an American who lives in the UK. So this was really fun. I... Uh, I really loved this story. She sent it to me back in November. So like I said before, for this segment, I do have a nice queue of stories built up. However, it's a weekly podcast. I will be posting a video next week for Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve? Yeah, I think it's the 24th next Sunday. I will be here. So I do need lots of stories. So if you have a knitting story or something happens and you're like, oh my gosh, that's a knitting story, send it to me. Devin at knittingmcpearly.com. Your cute hilarious, ridiculous, humiliating story can become a part of our oral tradition here on the Nitty McPurly podcast. We can all suffer with, laugh with, cry with you in your knitting story. So send that to me if you have one. This is what Julie has to say. She says, I am Julie, a regular listener of your Nitty McPurly podcast. I have been inspired to step out of my comfort zone and share my story a narrative interwoven with the resilience of knitting and my lifelong battle with Crohn's disease, a chronic lifelong inflammatory bowel disease that affects the digestive tract. Oh, and this story is called A Year of Healing Through Stitches. Julie says, my journey with knitting began in middle school, a skill lovingly taught by a teacher who perhaps didn't realize the lifelong gift she was giving me. Knitting became a sporadic yet comforting presence in my life, resurfacing at times when I needed it most. I think a lot of people have had an experience like this where someone took the time to teach them how to knit. I'm curious, Julie, were you taught in school? Because you said you're from Texas, I believe. And I just, in the UK, I know that they used to teach knitting in school. I don't know if they still do, but I'm wondering if the teacher taught you as a part of school or, you know, just outside of the school experience. She says, living with Crohn's disease has been my reality since I was nine years old. It's a condition that runs in my family, yet it was always shrouded in silence and shame. We each bore our struggles privately, a silent solidarity in our shared pain. That's so sad. She says, becoming a mother to Maya, who's seven, and Oren, six last week, brought joy and purpose to my life. But as Crohn's increasingly took its toll, 
my role as a vibrant, active mother and wife was overshadowed by debilitating pain and fatigue. It was during these challenging times that I found solace in knitting. It allowed me to remain connected to my family when my physical presence was limited. Crafting a jumper for Maya or a hat for Oren became my way of saying, I'm here, I love you, even on the hardest days. A year ago, my health journey took a significant turn with a surgery to remove my entire colon resulting in a permanent stoma. I'm sorry, I'm itchy. This daunting step was a gateway to a life less dominated by pain. Recovery was a slow and arduous process, but knitting remained my steadfast companion. The gentle click of needles and the feel of yarn running through my fingers provided a meditative escape from the trials of recovery. Your podcast, Devin, became a cherished part of my healing journey. The stories, the shared experiences, the sense of community that I found in your episodes were a source of comfort and inspiration during some of my most challenging moments. Today, I look back on this past year with a heart full of gratitude, grateful for a surgery that has granted me a new lease on life, for the progress I've made in recovery, and for being able to be more present for my children and returning to work. Above all, I am grateful for knitting, a simple yet profound craft that has been my anchor in the storm. I wanted to share my story with the Knitty McPurley community to highlight the power of our craft. Knitting has been more of a hobby, more than a hobby. It has been a lifeline, a source of comfort, and a means of expressing love in times when words were not enough. Thank you, Devin, for creating a space that celebrates the joys of knitting, for the stories that have lifted my spirits, and for reminding us of the incredible strength and connection found in our shared passion. What a beautiful story, Julie. I love your attitude about a permanent stoma. I did have to look that up because I didn't know what it was. Um, it reminds me of a story I heard of someone who was in a wheelchair and a well-meaning person saying, you know, is it, is it hard for you to be so limited by the wheelchair? And their response was, my wheelchair doesn't limit me. My wheelchair gives me freedom. Without it, I would be stuck in bed all the time. Like their view of it was so much larger. Like I have a life, I can do pretty much whatever I want because of my wheelchair. And your attitude toward having a stoma is like that. Like my pain is so much less. I have a new lease on life. I just think that is such a great positive outlook. And I'm so glad for you. I love that. We emailed back and forth a little bit um, back in November and I asked her, I said, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, but you use the word jumper. So maybe you're British and you don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Uh, when I was in college, I had a year in England and uh, Thanksgiving was underwhelming there. <laughs> they don't celebrate it. Um, but she said, even though I'm in the UK now, she said... Oh, I'm originally from Austin, Texas. Even though I'm in the UK now, we're keeping the tradition alive. So they do celebrate Thanksgiving there uh, because they are blending their British and American traditions. I love it. Thank you, Julie, so much for that wonderful, wonderful story. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you all for joining me. This has been a very, very joyful episode. Despite my low light, it's like, it's just pure fog outside. I can't even see past the trees because of the fog. So perfect, perfect knitting weather, perfect sitting on the couch and watching Christmas movies. Whether I think today we are watching a Muppet Christmas Carol. I think we're at the Muppets. The closer we get to Christmas, the better the movies get. <laughs> All right, knitters, have a wonderful week. I will see you back here next time. Bye.